This conference will now be recorded. Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, April 7th at 9.03. And our topic for today is going to be uh, no inventory, no problem. We all know that it is a huge problem right now having no inventory. Uh, but we are going to be tackling this issue and start my slideshow right here from the beginning here. All right. So besides no inventory, no problem, uh, we're also calling this class today how to get listings in today's market. So our discussion for today is how to get listings in today's market, specifically how to get listings when there seems that there are very few to be had. Our market is in what I would term an extremely tight seller's market. Statewide, we're looking at a reduction of over 50% of the supply of homes year over year. Locally, and that's more like 88% in a reduction over the year before. We're looking at numbers like a 12-day supply of Bend, Oregon, single-family homes on less than an acre, where a balanced market is a six-month supply. And a recent stat I saw showed homes are selling in an average of just four days once they hit the market. This is the March inventory of homes for sale. I did this slide um, a few days ago. It might have adjusted a little bit, but this shows you compared with 2020, where we had 656 uh, homes for, uh, for sale in March. This year, we have 77. So we're down 88% over what we were a year ago. But as an introduction to this class today, I need to look at a couple of more interesting statistics in order to understand strategies to get more listings in a tight market. And here's the first. According to the 2020 NAR Home Buyer and Seller Generational Trend Report, 87% of all home sellers would recommend their agent to others. And so let's split this up into two parts in order to fully understand how important this number is to each of you. The first is, would the seller use the real estate agent again? And second, would the seller recommend that agent to others? This is a great chart that answers the question. If you represented them as a buyer's agent, would they use you again as a seller's agent? Well, overall, the answer is yes, but only if you are what we call front of mind when they're making the decision. As you can see, nearly half of all home sellers went with a new agent. So part of our marketing strategies we will discuss today is how to best keep in contact with test clients we represented as a buyer's agent, but also how to reach out to that 47% that ended up with a new agent. I would argue that the reason they went with a new agent is because the old agent was no longer front of mind when it comes to getting ready to sell their home. The next chart to me is even more interesting. It actually speaks to not what clients might do, but what they actually say they have done. Overall, 67% of sellers recommended their agent to others. That's two out of three of your past sellers should be a source of future business for you if you're doing your job right, and not just one time. According to this NAR report, 54% of past clients will refer you two or more times. Why not the other 33%? Probably because either you are no longer friend of mine or you never asked them to. A lot of people need to be asked in order for them to even think of doing something like a referral. They don't understand how our business operates. They don't get it. And they don't know uh, how our business is all a referral business. And so you got to let them know about that. Now, here's two quick slides you need to understand before we go on and try to get listings in today's market. The first here is on what is the most important factor in choosing a real estate agent to sell a home. These two factors are similar enough to group together, where over 50% of all sellers are looking for an agent who is reputable, in particular being honest and trustworthy. So when you're reaching out to get business or even trying to establish an image of yourself in the marketplace, it would be smart to remember that sellers are actually looking for what they're actually looking for an agent. So reputation of the agent and that the agent is honest and trustworthy. Let me give you an example of establishing an image with a simple photo of a business card of a top producing agent. 
This agent, Gloria Carmano, is a top luxury realtor in the Los Angeles area, working a lot with Latino celebrities. According to Gloria, with Latinos, it all begins with trust. But really, isn't that true of pretty much all sellers in the market? Look how easily she's marketed herself with a classy business card and a descriptive tagline, a luxury broker you can trust with selling your home. One last thing to understand for today's discussion, if you want to represent more sellers, is to understand how buyers search for homes. As you can see from this chart, everyone is on the internet. In fact, they are on the internet weeks before ever contacting an agent. Is what people do now. If you do not have a solid internet presence and want to be a top listing agent, you need to have one. I think you all know, if you've attended my previous classes, that this has been a goal of our company since day one. We regularly blog, make changes to our website with updated material, search engine optimization of our website, and make contacts offsite that will boost our online presence. And as a result, we are now ranked on the front page for popular search terms like Ben Real Estate, where we are currently number three in SEO, just behind Realtor.com and Zillow, but ahead of Redfin and Trulia and everybody else. It doesn't take a lot of time each week to do this, but we've been persistent and consistent for over 10 years doing this. And we're in this for the long term, and we hope all of you are as well. So with this background let's get to our five strategies to get listings in today's real estate market okay strategy number one this is what we're calling layered marketing and you send this picture here because uh, it's a great picture and i think it it kind of it exudes kind of what we're looking at this is a, a idea that's taught by pretty much all the real estate coaching programs uh it's and and also ourselves it's it's that whenever you are reaching out to your client base, you're not relying on just one marketing source, but rather three or four different mediums. For instance, you might start off with a Facebook ad, which you can set up directly to your email list and then send out a postcard and then follow that up with a personalized letter, which is hand addressed, hand addressed, really important. And finally, a phone call as a follow up to the marketing you've already done. This would be spaced out over about a two month period. And all of these contacts should be focusing on your value proposition and what makes you unique in this crowded realtor marketplace. Now, strategy two is a unique idea created by a real estate agent by the name of Jimmy Burgess. Using this unique method, he was able to generate $11.6 million in listings in three months. This method involves sending out unsolicited video CMAs on BombBomb. BombBomb, if you're not familiar with it, is a video program that is embedded in emails that you send out. Uh, it's not a link. What it is, is when you receive an, uh, an email with a BombBomb in it, as soon as you open the email, the video starts playing. Uh, to be clear, these unsolicited CMAs, he didn't wait for people to contact him to ask him to do a CMA, but instead he would send out a CMA to somebody within 90 days and uh, every day he sent them out and within 90 days he sent out 72 of them. What made them even more unique is that each one started off with one of those Google Earth videos that start off in space and it's spiraling to their personal home. So let me show you what this looks like real quick. Here is a Google Earth Pro. I'm popping in my home. And you can see how the video zooms in towards my home. And then I can pull it in further and I can record this. So here's my home and it shows us. And of course, if this is the first thing you're seeing in a, in a bomb bomb video is this, it's going to catch someone's attention. Obviously, they're going to look at it. It's like, oh, here's the earth. And now here's my house in relationship to everybody around it. And you follow this up with a CMA. This is a really cool tool. Google Earth Pro, by the way, is free. 
It doesn't cost anything to use. Uh, CMAs, we do them all the time on, um, you know, all the time anyone's asking for us, asking for these. And so it's super easy to put one of these sort of things together. Let me get back to our thing here. So that's his method. But the question is, who did Jimmy send this, these things to? It really, any list of home buyers would do, but he started with a list of emails of people he had worked with in the past. The next group would be your farming community, people you meet at an open house or floor from leads or referrals, or any homeowner, preferably those who've owned their home for more than a few years, who's in your market area. So for the technology, BombBomb Bomb works well, as once they open their email, it essentially starts playing the video of Google Earth followed by your presentation on their CMA. And Here's the question, why would this be a good time to be sending these? With the pandemic winding down, stats are showing that more people are starting to list their home. And with the skyrocketing pricing, they wanna know what it's worth. I know I've seen other realtors saying this exact same thing and offering CMAs in their Facebook ads. Hopefully they're not gonna be getting your clients because you're gonna be reaching out to your clients yourself. But if you wanna learn more about how these are put together, I'm going to try to uh, put one together myself. Um, showing one on a presentation like this doesn't work real well, but what I'm going to do is I will get a free subscription to BombBomb Bomb and try to put one of these together and then send it to everybody in the company so you can kind of see how these works. Okay, the next strategy is something called pop buys. And I've asked, um, I have asked Shireen and Jackie to give us a little bit of help with this. So Jackie, uh, Shireen, would you unmute your mic and tell us a little bit about Popwise? I've got a few questions to ask you. Sure, good morning. Good morning. Morning, Jackie. Morning. So um, Shireen and I are gonna uh, pop back and forth and taking turns. So, um, I think everybody's probably heard of Popeyes. Um, and again, it's like anything else that we do. Um, we can hear things, but it's all about what you do with it. And so when I met Shireen, she was doing them and I had doing, been doing them. We both um, took some Buffini classes and I certainly am still really involved in Buffini. But like the one um, in the picture with all the bags, that particular one, um, gosh, I can't even see it, but, um, I can't remember what that was, but we'll look over to the right of that. That was like um, any clients that sold a house that year made Christmas ornaments um, with their name, a key, the year, and on the back was a copy of our business card laminated on there. And, um, you know, we just popped by our clients and, and gave them um, a little bottle of wine and a Christmas present. Other ones we've made, um, you know, cookies and put them in, in sealed containers, things like that. Um, and Shireen, go ahead and say a few things and then I'll talk about delivery and a couple of other things or ask people if they have questions. Good morning, everyone. Um, some of the questions that have come up are, I'm looking at the list of questions here. Uh, where do you get Popeyes? Where do the ideas come from? How much do they cost, et cetera, et cetera. And they can really be anything um, that you can think of that might be a benefit or value to the client or just a, just a nice uh, reminder or touch by of yourself and, and, and that you're letting people know that you're thinking about them. Um, I go to the dollar store, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, um you can go to oriental trading and they're great for any holiday or any any sometimes just randomly just to let people know that you're thinking about them um we do drop them off on their doors uh doorsteps uh, not always but a lot of the time um, and you can just just be really creative uh, another source to look for ideas is pinterest um, you just type in pop by ideas and you can get a lot of ideas from that um yeah. but they're fun and i know people appreciate them and you definitely stay top of mind uh when yeah. you when you're there an example an example of that would be like um this week uh today's wednesday so it was monday i um i had a popeye and we keep non-perishable ones in our car so it could be dog biscuits and a really cute little cellophane thing and you know with a, a little slogan with it um uh, 
dogs are special too or something, or are you looking for a home with a yard? Just any, you know, whatever the Popeye says, you can drop it off. You can see somebody at a gas station and they have a puppy and you end up, or a dog and you end up giving their dog a treat with your business card and, and they go, oh, you sell real estate, it starts a complete conversation. Um, but this week I, I popped by um, a past client and sold them a house in 2017 and I was over by their office and I just had um, a couple of little Popeyes in my car and I stopped in just to say hi and I uh, gave him a pop by and he, he texted me last night. Uh, they want to sell, list their house and they're looking at a home in, um, if, it, if it's still on the market, uh, out in Sun River. But it's just keeping in contact with people. And I know that Shireen and I are both really diligent about um, the Popeyes, whether we do them, you know, one of the questions was how long, how often do we do Popeyes? And do we hand deliver them? Well, we we do them once a month, weekly or daily. It just depends. If if it's a seasonal thing, Shireen and I will get together and we'll make 50 to 100 Popeyes and, and we'll just tackle it and go out and tell people thank you and deliver it to their office, deliver it to their home. I can tell you when you walk into an office and you, you're you bringing somebody um, and, you know, for holidays, it's usually a... a, a higher end type of Popeye for a client. And so you pop by and bring them a bottle of wine. And if you see that bottle over to the right, that has my name on it. Our new bottles have mine and Shireen's oh. pictures on them. I'll get it. Um, I'll grab one. And um, the new, the oh, new I'm ones getting one too. <laughs> Can you see? Yep. And um, I got one. And so the, if you pop by somebody's office, and you bring them something just to say, hey, I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. And what a great way to do that, you guys, because then you're, you got a bottle of wine on the table from your realtor. Um, but when you pop by and do that, it starts a whole conversation in an office. Um, who was that? And, oh, that's our, that, and you love it when people say, oh, that's my real, that's my real estate broker. You know, that, that, there's, not, there's no better compliment than that one. Somebody claims you to be their, their real estate broker. You're their personal broker. And I think... That's a lot what Popeyes do. Um, you know, somebody asked what our return on investment is. I, I really can't put a number to that, but I can tell you that m almost all our business now is coming from referrals. Um, so that's pretty awesome. And, and that's the key. You are connecting with your people. I mean, I've, I'm looking at the picture that we have here on the screen. And it, this is one that you did and said, we sold five more homes recently. Uh, oh, I can uh, remember that one, yeah. Yeah, and so you're listing a bunch of homes that you just recently sold. So you're reminding people you're still in the business. These are the people uh, that you've had past business with and you're letting them know, I'm still on the business and I appreciate you. And by the way, uh, I would appreciate also your new referrals as well. So it, it is a way of keeping yourself front of mind. And so how much time do you think you actually spend putting these together? Oh my gosh, Shireen, it's not very, it's not very much, is it? When we do the massive ones, you know, it's probably a couple hours, but heck, how much fun is that? You just get together, open these bags and stick them in there. And it's probably more time delivery because you end up talking with people. Mm -hmm. But for the other ones, I would say, what do you think, Shireen? A couple hours a month, maybe? Maybe. Yeah, they're super easy. And again, depending upon how many you're putting together and what you're putting together, super easy to put together. And at least for me, you know, if I'm sitting and watching TV or I'm just sitting doing something, I, I can be doing this in the background, you know, putting the bags together. And, you know, if I don't watch TV that much, but um, it's just uh, I, I just think it doesn't it doesn't take a lot of time. Yeah. And then this, this the is a new one. Can you see that? This is one um, I'm going to get 50 little things of Cracker Jacks today because baseball season just started. And this one says your referrals are a home run. And I'm just going to tape these and my business card to um, 50 things of Cracker Jacks and go deliver them to some clients this week. That's awesome. That's really awesome. A couple of questions here people have. Who does the wine bottles for you? Oh, it's called Windsor Wines. And I would be happy to send that to you, Linnea, and you could send that out. Um, Perfect. It's, uh, it's really good wine, too. It's uh, from the Napa Valley. And this, this particular one's called Fusion Red. It's a blend. And um, you can make your own labels. It's, it's really cool. 
And it's not, it's not that, I mean, that you average about anywhere from eight to $12 a bottle. You can go much higher, but we're usually right in the $12 range. And that's your big one for Christmas time, typically? Yeah, I like, we like, think we like Thanksgiving because, you know, that's when, families that's the biggest that's the biggest wine holiday of the year is thanksgiving and thanksgiving. so we got people over at your table and you've got a couple of bottles of wine with our pitch our lovely picture on it um <laughs> i'd love it that gives people say that's what those are our, who are these chicks those are our realtors <laughs> we, we are also targeting uh new year's this year um kind of doing a pop by pop into the new year in type right. of thing with the wine and champagne um as a, an example. Yeah. And, and you're saying that this is your major source of future business is connecting with your past clients in this really personal way. And you're getting a lot of referrals as a result of this. As you said, Jackie, you met somebody and they're like ready to sell and buy through right. this personal um, contact. Previous client, yeah. And they've actually given me our, uh, well, actually it was before Sheree and I were partners, but they've given us now, um, one or two referrals so uh you know not everything comes to fruition but boy when somebody gives us a referral the other thing that i'm sure everybody does but the minute i get a referral from somebody i write the person who gave us the referral a thank you card even if it doesn't come to pass we we great we graciously thank them that we were top of mind and they gave us a referral a personal note handwritten and people yep. will always look at those things. They will always open them up. You you look at it and you and you acknowledge the fact that you're thanking them for this referral. It it is this is not rocket science, but this is just reaching out and giving people a connection. Think about the cost of a a newspaper ad. How many you know those things are expensive or if you put an, an ad in a publication somewhere you can spend thousands and thousands of dollars on something like this uh on on one of those ads whereas you're spending a tiny fraction of that in this but with the personal connection you're getting far more business through this than i would think any sort of expensive ad in a newspaper or in a publication somewhere mm -hmm. yeah yeah so and so the other thing you know you talk about who to pop by to and if they're not our past clients the people that i think that we think of quite often is you go to the dentist every three months to get your teeth cleaned i always bring about 10 pop buys with me um you know with goodies in it and always remind them that you know we're in the business when i go to the doctor which was this week uh, when i went in i took about 15 little pop buys and bags and ask them to distribute them you know on the break room table um it's when you get your hair done i mean when you walk into um a, a sh uh, hair salon and you're taking in like 10 little bags to your salon your gal that does your hair a guy that does your hair it's a great conversation of who they're ever currently working on and then your hairdresser you give her business she's certainly going to help you get give your business out so it's a, it's a great way to do things Wonderful. Does anyone have questions, direct questions uh, of Shireen or Jackie? If so, just unmute your mic and ask. Now, we've had some comments from people. I know there's other people. I know Sherry Johnson does Popeyes. Uh, I know a few other people within our company who do it as well. I think it's a great tool and obviously a great way of having that personal connection with your clients. So, Shereen, Jack, anything else that you can share with us before we move on? I, the only other thing I'll say that I think is, um, and certainly Shereen and I want to do more business, and, and we have a lot, I'm anxious to hear other people's ideas because I'm not about inventing a will. I'm all about taking the will and making it better. So, um, yeah. but the one thing I can say that we also do very consistently, her and I both do, is we, we hand write 50 cards each a month. And, and like uh, 50 cards, okay. Yep. Yeah. And um, and I keep those people in my sphere. And if it's like one of our past clients' kids' birthday, I might mention it. I hope Alex had a good birthday. Just little personal things that you've kept notes when you've met your clients that you can re you know look back at you know in your little uh notes on your um spread your CRM and um 
it's just great if you can bring it up. You know, how's your puppy? It's now a year old. You know, it, it blows people's mind that you know that. So, yeah, that, that's good. really true. Anyway. Yeah, uh, I had a question from Kathy. She wanted to know what you do for out of area clients. Usually just the handwritten notes. And sometimes yeah. I, I bought lottery tickets, $1 or $2 lottery tickets, and I'll throw them in a handwritten note and say, just remember, you know, having a good broker is not like a scratch ticket. You will always win with the good broker. You won't always win with the scratcher. <laughs> That's clever. That's really, really clever. Yeah. So you just oh, throw man. little things in there sometimes. You know, sometimes I throw a four leaf clover in there, like you get at the dollar store and go, luck, luck, you know, luck doesn't come from a four leaf clover. Make sure you have a good broker, you know, or whatever. I just make up some little thing and write them in the note. Clever, clever ideas. But again, it's a great way of people of connecting with people, letting you know you do. It. And it sounds like you work very heavily with a calendar. You have a, a, a scenario set up. I'm going to spend so much time. But you said it's only a couple of hours a month doing this. Oh. Uh huh. The pop ice, yeah, to create them. And you know, if it's perishable, you got to get them out right away. If it's non-perishable, Shireen will have some in her car. I'll have some in mine. Sometimes we swap back and forth. She'll have a different kind, you know, and again we just kind of share and and go for it yeah, and right. i always keep something in my car and mm -hmm. and i and i keep things also for for military and police officers and things like that although those items are not branded um for police officers and in, in in particular but um I, we always have a little bag of something probably in our car because you never know who you're going to run into or who you're going to Mm -hmm. Well, like you said, the person walking the dog who has a dog, you have a little bag with that's branded to you with dog biscuits and stuff that you can talk mm -hmm. with them. That's just a great yeah. idea. Awesome. Okay, well, if no one has any further questions for Shireen and Jackie, I'm going to move on to the next thing. Um, okay, very good. So, so here's the question. Do you have a plan? And I want to preface this section by stressing to you that the first step is to put together your contact list. And this wouldn't work for Jackie or Shireen unless they had a contact list. It should be a living, breathing document that you keep adding to and purging over time. That person has moved out of the area that you no longer and, and they're not coming back. So you may want to eliminate them from your list, but you have new clients you're working with. You need to add them to this. So and this list should be the backbone of your career. Uh, we've also spent some time talking with Dana here in our office, who's been in real estate now for 17 years and is our top producing broker. She has a list of about 250 contacts. Plus, she's involved with an active uh, referral group uh, that she gets a lot of referrals from. Of her 250 contacts, she does have a very small group of about 10 people who are her most constant source of leads. But for most of us, you may want to start off with something called Dunbar's Law, which states that we only really maintain 150 stable relationships at any time. And that's probably a more realistic goal for most of us to achieve a, a list of 150. So who should be on your list? Your list will likely contain people you sold homes to in the past, your farming leads, you know, such as floor, phone leads, internet leads, marketing leads, as well as your social contacts that are in your market area. So as Jackie and Shereen were talking about, your doctor, your hairdresser, your dentist, um, people you meet. So I think that's a great start. So where do sellers come from? That's a good question. They're gonna come from that list. This particular graphic is a couple of years old, but the point is the same. Most of your work as a real estate agent will come from your past clients and people that are referred to you. So use the agent previously, 23%, they're referred. And if you look at this, you can see that the walk-ins, now in our office, it's a higher percentage, but in standard real estate, walk-in 1%, direct mail 2%, yard sign 2%. Um, these are very small compared with this large group of referrals or use the agent previously. I need to pause here a second to make sure this point sinks in for as for some this may be the most important thing I say today 
So I want to repeat this. The majority of your work as a real estate agent will come from your past clients and people refer to you. I've had this discussion with a number of brokers over the years who just could not make a good living in real estate because their emphasis was in the wrong place. They were trying to base their entire business plan on walk-ins or internet leads, and those might be icing on the cake, but they're not the cake. I can think of one in particular I kept on saying, what's your list of your past clients? It's, well, the list is there on my computer. Well, do you ever reach out to that list? Do you ever connect with that list? Do you ever do anything with the list? No, no. So as much as I encouraged um, this person, this person really lost out on a lot of potential success because they never worked their past list. So as Jackie and Shireen talked about, they spend most of their time working their client base because they know this is where the bulk of their business comes from. But at the same time, they put effort into building that base, handing out those little Popeyes to people with dogs, never ignoring it, never ignoring the opportunity to do floor, uh, to have a chance to meet new people, uh, to work internet leads, but also the vast, vast amount of work comes from working your past clients. So here back to the question of what's your plan? Washington DC realtor Jessica Evans has a very simple plan based on the knowledge that the agent who has last touch with a homeowner who's ready to sell has a significantly higher chance of winning that business than the most known agent. To her, it's all about uh, ex executing the right strategy at the right time. Her plan is very simple. At the beginning of the year, she sends out an email to everyone in her contact base that reads, hi, Brad, or hi, Mary, a few quick stats for you. Buyer demand is up 60% and active listings are down 36%. These conditions are creating incredible challenges for buyers and sellers alike. I want to help you develop a winning strategy to accomplish your real estate goals this year. I'd love to know which goal best describes your situation. One, I'm renting but love to buy this year. Two, I'd sell if I could find a new home to move into. Or three, no real estate plans this year. Let me know ASAP because I can prepare some useful information for you that would be incredibly helpful. I look forward to your response. You see, does this sound like something that would apply to your market as well? And if you wanna do something like this, I can certainly provide you with some up-to-date um, data to use. And then she follows this email up with a text, an idea we've mentioned earlier on using more than one medium to get in front of your clients. Her text is yeah, very simple. Hi, Brad or Mary, whatever. Hope you read, uh, I hope you're well, my friend. I just sent you an email. Let me know if you fall into bucket number one, number two, or number three with a little, uh, little emoji after that. And again, this person should also do periodically follow ups with additional updates in the market and again, follow up with a text. Another thing she contributes her success to is following your A list of most promising referral sources on social media. That's really important and make appropriate comments on their timelines. So here's something that she did on LinkedIn. Hi, Danielle, I saw your post on LinkedIn. It's been way too long since we've connected and I wanna reach out to say congratulations on your recent promotion. I know how hard you work and I'm incre incredibly excited to see your continued, uh, you continue to succeed. I'm not sure if you've been following the news about real estate market, it's been pretty wild. I'll check back in a week to give you an update on what's happening in your local market. In the meantime, I'm here if you need me. Take well, talk soon, Jimmy. So following people on social media and not just following, but actually commenting. Um, I personally am seeing one person in our in our market who does this repeatedly. And I don't know if you're seeing the same thing as well, but every time I do a post on Facebook, this person comments or does a little like or love. And can you think of that person here? This is someone within our industry who is obviously using this strategy to connect with people and to develop a positive thought process of who she is. It's Sabrina Norton. I see her every time we do a post about a new listing or a just sold or something like that, she will make a comment or if nothing else, just a little like. So if she is following people who give her business, who refer business to her, she's doing it, an outstanding job doing that. I don't know if another um, real estate um, escrow officer who does this, 
to that extent. Maybe it's just because Sabrina is following Ben Premier that she's doing this. I don't know if she's doing it on your personal pages as well, but I, I see it. And she doesn't know I, I put this together here in, in this presentation. She doesn't know that. So here's another thing that's important. Don't forget the holidays. Keep your mind, keep your, your name front of mind with your clients when they're ready to sell their home. And the three things that are, make it great are, it doesn't feel like you're soliciting them. It comes directly from your email and we do all the work for you. This is our contact uh, client retention program. So this is the, the email that we sent out on your behalf coming from you. We put it all together on Happy New Year. And then we're gonna do this one for Happy Fourth of July and this one for Halloween. All we need is to have your email list in an Excel spreadsheet to get this started. And then hopefully you are motivated enough after this presentation to get after that immediately if you haven't done so. And then once Emily or Brittany have this list, they'll put the emails together branded to you again, as if it comes from you we use constant contact, but the email is from you. And if you have questions on how this works, be happy to talk with you about it privately. The other thing you shouldn't forget about is happy house anniversaries. I think this is really cute. These are actually uh, greeting cards that you can get on amazon.com. 25, 25 cards for $13.99. And when you put that down on your list, it's been one year since your client bought their house and you sent them a happy house anniversary card. They're going to smile. They're going to think that's cute. And they're going to think, wow, my agent remembered me. And when it's time for them to sell that house, hopefully they will contact you. And let's go back to this graphic one more time, because it really does tell us how to get uh, best get new listings. Every year, NAR does an extensive survey and asks the question, would you use a realtor again? Would you recommend your realtor to others? And nine out of 10 say yes. And for agents like Dana, she has a small group who continually recommend her, providing her with a constant stream of referrals. But despite these amazingly positive statistics, 76% of realtors become irrelevant once they've handed the keys to the clients. Why? They just did an amazing job. They wanted to recommend the realtor others, those, those buyers did. I wish they would just ask one more question in the NAR survey. If you didn't use your realtor again, why not? Now that would be really revealing. However, I have very little doubt that it was because the realtor didn't seem to really care about them after the sale. There was no commitment to keeping in touch because when it came time to sell their home, the realtor was no longer front of mind. So my advice to you, reconnect with your past clients and sphere of influence so that you become the natural referral. Get your contact list together. Use layered marketing when reaching out. Don't just rely on one source like a postcard or just holiday cards. Be proactive and offer something of value like the Jimmy Burgess strategy where you're giving something of value rather just asking for a sale. Use video, try bomb bomb. And again, I'm gonna try it myself. It's gonna be a free couple of week trial, so we'll see how that all works. It's all about being the trusted agent. The video is the best and fastest way to do this. And also the human psyche best responds to a human face. Show your clients you care by creative gifts like Popeyes. There are obviously endless opportunities to do this for creative people. Have a plan, use a calendar and discipline yourself. You need to be the realtor who comes to mind when your client is ready to sell their home. Devote enough time to this. Depending on where you are in your real estate career, this will likely be different. For realtors still building their sphere, you will need to devote substantially more time than somebody like Dana, who already has 250 people. Don't be afraid of social media. Everyone's on it, and it is a very useful medium for keeping your name and face in front of your sphere. Remember where your clients come from and build your business model around them. And like Gloria Carmono, trust is everything. So whatever you do, make sure that your reputation is one of, of being honest and trustworthy. 
as that is what home sellers say is most important to them as a real estate agent. Now, I have a bonus slide I want to share with you guys. Um, it's been a year, over a year, I've been really pushing and working hard on developing these, these programs to help you build your business. Uh, I know with COVID things have, you know, we had, who would have ever anticipated this would happen to us, that COVID would hit. But I did want to share this last slide with you. I don't know if you can see it really well. This is our MLS stats for March, the month we just finished. So this is the market penetration report by offices. These are uh, sold, all categories, anything that closed. And you can see that for the month of March, Ben Premier Real Estate was the number three bro brokerage for volume. And when you consider that Ben Premier Real Estate is an office of 55 agents, uh, we are three times, uh, Fred and, and Seth of Ease are at least three times larger than us, maybe four times. Cobalt Banker is at least three times bigger than us. Uh, we, we had a phenomenal month. And I think a lot of this is due to your hard work. Well, it's obviously due to your hard work. But if you look at it also, Yes, we may have had fewer actual sales of 53, but the volume of our sales, the average sales price was significantly higher than a lot of other offices. We, we are working really, really, really hard and the results are showing. So um, I just had to share this with you guys. Um, obviously, this just a, it's just one month. Uh, we are consistently the fifth or sixth brokerage in our market. And again, I always say when you take that into consideration with the size of, of who we are versus the size of some of these other offices, you guys are really hardworking people and you make things happen. So I just wanted to uh, share this with you. And with that, I want to open this up for anything else um, and anyone else who may have comments or questions or want to ask for more details on anything um, or have haves or wants or anything else that they want to share with us. Does anybody have anything to share? I can't wait till we get back to live meetings so I can actually see your faces because I will sometimes see someone saying looking like they want to talk and then they don't. So it's um, Linnea, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I know that obviously I, I just arrived in town a year and a half ago and, and joined up with Ben Premier um, last early last spring. Um, and every single one of my deals, and I have four closing this month, have all been referrals. And oh. all people that I have met on front desk. Front desk. Yeah, like I say, the walk, the, the chart that I was showing you when it says the majority of only 1% of work for agents comes from walk-ins. In our office, it's a whole lot bigger than that. It really is. I mean, our floor is, is truly... A, a great tool for our agents. But as you say, it's referrals. This, this is a referral business. And our, our, most, our most active brokers rarely do floor because they're so busy with all their other, all their other clients. They, they, they don't need to be building their business because they have so much business to begin with. Right. They're still real awesome. If they, have, if they do floor, they, they, they know what to do. Thanks for sharing that, Jane. Anyone else have something to share? If no one has anything else to share, I think we're done for today. I will record this. And if you guys uh, have questions on any of this, or if you need help getting your Excel list together, if you want to take Brittany and Emily up on the client retention program. We'd love to get that going for you. Uh, I know for those of our brokers who are utilizing that, they do say whenever an email does go out, they do hear from people. Anything else? 
Okay, yeah, if anyone else has questions or wants to talk with me directly, feel free to stop in. I will be here today. I am. At the end of the day, however, I'm going to get a COVID shot, so uh, I will be out probably from my, my appointment's at 4.30, so I will be probably driving out of here around 4.15. Um, so more of that, the better, I guess. Right, everybody? Thank you, guys. Talk to you soon.